I'm Ted Berg for SNY.TV and welcome to Know Your Enemy presented by Pepsi Max. The Yanks continue to face off against the NL East in interleague play. Tonight they kick off a three game set with the first place Nationals. Calling in to chat with us is Nationals insider Mark Zuckerman from CSNWashington.com. Mark, how are you? Doing good today. How are you, Ted? Mark, I'm doing well. Outside of the obvious, the starting pitching for the Nationals, they've been bolstered by some big bats in their lineup and none so much as Bryce Harper, the 19-year-old. How good has he been? He's been remarkably good. Um, you know, I think everybody expected that, that he would burst onto the scene and do some exciting things, but I don't think anybody could have imagined that he'd be so consistent uh, and so dominant at such a young age. They didn't intend for him to come up as early as he did. They were hoping to keep him in the minors a little longer, but because of injuries, they felt like they needed to do it. Uh, and he's just taken off since then. He is... Already at this point, clearly the best everyday position player on this team, which is already one of the best teams in baseball. And not just the offensive numbers, too. Just such an exciting player, really, in all facets of the game. Yeah, and I think that's the thing that has uh, surprised people the most. People had a, a, an idea of maybe what he was, and they knew that he had these great physical gifts. I don't think people realize just how hard he plays the game and how advanced he is uh, at the game. Number one, he hustles out every single ground ball. Uh, he's taken so many extra bases already this year, and that's impressed opposing players as well as teammates. And number two, his advanced approach to hitting. Uh, his numbers, if you look at his first at-bat versus a starter against his second at-bat versus a starter, he's hitting well over 400 the second time around. He's able to make those adjustments, pick up on some things from the first at-bat, and come out and apply them in the second at-bat. You know, for a 19-year-old to be able to do that, that's just remarkable. He is unbelievable. The flip side of things for the Nationals, the rest of the lineup, outside of maybe a couple of guys, not hitting so well. They're 12th in the league in batting average, 13 in on-base percentage. What's happening there? Well, it's been kind of just a struggle. They've had injuries uh, that haven't helped matters. Jason Ward's been out for a while. Uh, Ryan Zimmerman missed a couple weeks. Zim is probably the biggest surprise there because he's been so consistent. He's been their guy for years now. He signed a huge contract, $100 million extension in spring training, and everybody expected big things from him, and he just hasn't been able to get himself going. Uh, and it's important they really need to get him going because he's the guy hitting behind Bryce Harper, and with Harper getting on base as much as he is as a number two spot, there's a lot of RBI opportunities for Zimmerman. He's uh, pounding a lot of ground balls uh, among the league leaders in double plays. He's just not driving the ball to center field and right field the way that he always has in the past. Uh, he says his shoulder is fine, but he's got to get this thing going here soon. Let's talk about the starting pitchers in this series, and obviously a lot of the talk in Washington is about Steven Strasburg. Really, they've been so good up and down the rotation. Gio Gonzalez, the guy going tonight, has been outstanding this year. He's only allowed one home run for the season, and he's striking out so many batters. And he's given up the fewest hits uh, per nine innings in baseball, which is just a great combination. Um, you know, a lot of people didn't know much about this guy when they traded for him. Uh, they sent four pretty good prospects to Oakland to get him over the winter, and people were sort of questioning that. Well, they're finding out now why Mike Grizzo thought he was worth uh, that hefty price. He's been fantastic. Being able to keep the ball in the strike zone, walks were kind of his problem in the past. His walk numbers are way down. Uh, he's a left-hander who can throw 95, and he's got one of the best curveballs you'll see, and that allows him to get so many swings and misses. You know, Strasburg gets all the attention, but you could make the case right now that Gonzalez has actually been better and deserves to start the All-Star game over Strasburg. Jordan Zimmerman, another guy that's been great for the Nats going tomorrow, hasn't had a start shorter than six innings all season. Also a guy that seems to match up well against the Yankees, a team known for you know working long at bats and, and, and making pitchers throw strikes. He throws strikes, he hardly walks anybody. Yeah, very efficient uh, and, and just very consistent start to start. He doesn't show a lot of emotion one way or the other, and I think they like that about him. I think that's allowed him to be uh, successful. He is, I remember a few years ago seeing when I think Jordan was a rookie and we were in San Francisco and he was going up against Matt Cain, and, and looking at the two of them, I thought to myself, boy, there's some similarities here. They kind of have the same physique, same style of pitching. Uh, I'm not saying that Zimmerman is going to become what Cain has done because obviously he's become a big-time pitcher, um, but Jordan has a lot of those same qualities. It, really, the only thing that's held him back to this point is, number one, not getting a whole lot of run support, which is why his win total isn't so good. And number two, he just seems to hit a wall around the sixth inning, seventh inning. He's had some trouble finishing those outings off. I think they'd like to see him ascend to that next level. Uh, and when he does, well, you know, watch out. He's going to be a really good pitcher for them. 
And Sunday starter Edwin Jackson also having a very good season, which is really the story again for the Nationals. He's suppressed hits better this year than he has ever in his career. Do you think that's randomness or, or maybe a tribute to the Nationals' defense? What's going on here? Well, you know, actually, when they signed him, they, they spotted a little flaw in his mechanics, and they thought that they could tweak that. They thought he might have been tipping his pitches a little bit um, out of uh, the windup. And whether that's it or not, it's working. Whatever they're doing is working. Um, it's been a big year for him. They gave him a one-year, $11 million contract. He was hoping for a really long-term deal with someone else and decided to settle for this. And I think there's some motivation there on his part to put up a big year because now he knows he's going to get another chance at free agency in the offseason. Uh, but again, here's a guy who takes the ball every fifth day, takes you deep in the game. As good as Gonzalez and Strasburg and Yerman are, the three longest outings, the only outings the Nats have had of anybody going into the eighth inning this year, have all been Edwin Jackson. He's just a workhorse, and to have him as a number four starter, it's been a real luxury for them. Mark, thanks so much. Okay, thank you, Ted. Remember, for all the latest Yankees coverage, be sure to check in at itsaboutthemoney.net and chat with other Yankee fans throughout the series at nyyfans.com.